Check the description for the following discount codes. I've actually been interested in installing one of these kits on my downstairs television for quite some time because I've got nice big white walls in the background, perfect for reflecting ambient light off of. But the first kit they offered to me like last year sometime, it didn't support HDR. Didn't support Dolby Vision, didn't support HDR 10. And of course that's no real use in a modern world where most of our displays have some sort of HDR support, and especially the one that I would specifically use it on downstairs, which is where I watch a lot of my films, you know, it had to support HDR. So this one now says it supports HDR 10 Dolby Vision, um, 4K at only 60 hertz, 1080p at 120 hertz. Now, a lot of you high-end sim racers out there are going to go, oh, well, that's no good. You know, I want 4K at 120 hertz. But those of us with screens that will do 4K at 120 hertz are at the niche end of the market. There's still an awful lot of people out there, sim racers, gamers, people that just watch, you know, films that will run a 4K screen at 60 hertz. That's probably the most common configuration. You know, not everyone has the money for high-end, fast refresh rate displays. So when they said, you know, said, do you want to take a look at this one? I looked at the spec. I was like, I will, because a good portion of my viewers, um, and just like me, in actual fact, downstairs, my TV does do 120 hertz at 4K, but my PC that runs it down there, which is a 3800X AMD CPU and a 2080, RTX 2080, can't run anything at 4K at 120 hertz. In fact, it would struggle to run much 4K at 60 hertz. A lot of the time I have to run things at 1440p. Um, so I thought, there's still enough people in this segment of the market who might actually find this helpful. Whether it be you've got a sim rig with a single display, you know, maybe you've got a GT Amiga Art with an old 50 inch plasma on like I used to have, you know, that would be fine. Uh, or maybe you've got one LG OLED on there and you know your gaming PC's got something like an RTX 2080 and, and you're running it at, at 60 hertz at 4K. So this is the sort of people that you might you know might find this product interesting and I thought there's going to be still a fair few of us out there in that situation so let's take a peek at it. Now the kit comes in different sizes. I'm fitting it to an 86 inch TV, so I've got the biggest one they do, which makes it 200 pounds, 200 pounds, 92 pence. Uh, the smallest size they do, which is 55 to 60 inch, is only 152 pounds and 51 pence. So the bigger you go, the more it costs. But let's just take a quick peek at the box before I open it up and show you what's inside. If you're not familiar with these sort of kits, they're basically an LED strip that you put around the back of the TV with a little interface box um, that takes the image from your game console or your Blu-ray player or whatever it might be, passes it through a little box out to LED strips and then continues that image onto your display. We've got a quick start on the inside of the box there, which is actually attached to it so it doesn't come off. Um, and then we've got some more instructions here. We've got the little pass-through box itself. Let's just get this unwrapped. I haven't opened any of this, so I thought I'd actually do a brief unboxing just to see what we get. So one HDMI in, one HDMI out, LED strip output, and then USB so micro USB that would then go to the t a USB port on the television and your DC power in. Um, it's not a bad looking little box and presumably I will Velcro this to the back of my TV or something like that because I'll still only want to see in a perfect world one HDMI cable going up to my TV which would then go into this and then from the output back into the TV to pass it through. There's a couple of buttons on the front there and what looks like some LED status indicators as well. What else do we have? Some fixings, little 3M Velcro clips and some screws and some more self-adhesive type pads. I guess I'll find out what they're for as I go on with the installation. We have a short HDMI cable. 
This feels quite nice quality. Almost got like a soft rubberized feeling to it. Doesn't feel, initial impressions, doesn't feel stiff like a lot of cheap HDMI cables are. But let's just undo it fully and have a little look. Because you know what a cheap HDMI cable feels like. Oh no, that's quite nice and quite nice and pliable actually. Decent, decent quality. No gold plating on the ends, but it's not necessary at all. It's not gonna make our signal any better. Uh, and then we've got power supply here with a UK adapter on. Looks like, yeah, they would be interchangeable. So you'll get whichever one comes for your country, presumably. And they just slot in like that. Branded Neo. And what we're looking at, one amp, no output, three amp, 36 watts at 12 volts. That's just a little look at that. It feels actually quite reasonable quality. No sharp edges where the two halves of the castings meet and feels like a reasonably decent plastic. The wire itself feels a little bit on the cheapy side. As you can see, we've just got two separate sort of, uh, not strands, but you know what I mean, two separate cores wrapped in their individual sheaths rather than being, you know, encased in one nice smooth one like the HDMI cable is. But other than that, adequate. And I'm guessing under here, yeah, we have our roll of LEDs. So they do come on a roll like this. There is our USB-C that will go into this little box here. And it's like we've got 3M self-adhesive on there. Let's just try and get some of this visible. Oh, so what I, what I quite like about this is it's not just bare LED strips, they've got this sort of clear sheath or diffuser, you might call it, over the top. That's going to protect them a little bit and also help diffuse the light. So, yeah, that actually feels, that feels pretty decent compared to some other ones that I've installed. But yeah, you just peel your 3M off, stick it in place. Now, I'm sure I spotted somewhere, it says not to cut the LED strip. Oh, it does, yes, on the quick start guide here. It says the light strip cannot be cut at the top there. Now, I'm sure previous kits like this I've seen would allow you to cut the strip and join it using little 90 degree joiners to go around the ends of the TV. But looking at this, looking down through the reel here, you can see there's more of this black wire in certain places like, like this. So I'm gonna guess there's a fixed amount of LEDs and then to go around the corner, we're, we've got a piece like this, um, which is obviously quite flexible and allow you to put it closer or further away depending on the size of your screen. That's gonna be my guess, obviously I'm yet to install it. But that's everything we've got. The LED reel, the little pass-through box, uh, an HDMI cable and a power supply and some silver adhesive bits and bobs to help tidy it all up along with the manual. There is also an app you can get for this for Android and iOS. Uh, I'll look at that once it's all installed. So that's what I'll go and do now. Fit this to the back of my TV. Uh, my TV is on the wall, so it'd be very hard for me to video me actually installing it. So what I'll do is get it installed and then show you afterwards what it looks like installed. I mean, ultimately, I should just be sticking across the top, down the sides, across the bottom, and sticking this little box in, and that should be all there is to it, really. It looks like a very simple installation, but we'll see once I get it all done in a little while. Well, I've finished my testing of this Light Me Fantasy TV backlight kit, and it's an interesting little toy. Uh, I wouldn't say really it's for sim racing, um, and we'll get to that in some video clips in a minute, but it is quite a cool toy to have on your television or your display nonetheless. So I'll show you all sorts of different clips in a minute, but let's just read a few of the things they say about this in, in their, on their website. They say, the Light Me Fantasy TV Backlight Kit is a brand new immersive experience. I mean, really, it's just a, an iteration of what they already had before, their, their Neo kit, so it's not really brand new. Color sync, obviously, 
infinite contrast and dynamic color mapping. Don't really think we've got infinite contrast and dynamic color mapping, little bit bold. Smart control, simple set, because there's an app you can use on your phone, I'll show you that in a minute. Simple setup in minutes, and this is true, it really did only take maybe 15 minutes to get it installed and then capable and compatible. So in fact, let me show you a video clip here of it installed. I didn't video myself installing it because it would be too awkward. You can see my TV's on a wall bracket and there's not a huge amount of space for me to be able to stand there with a the camera without my back just being to it the entire time. But there's the little box uh, installed, HDMI in and out, USB-C for the LED strips themselves. They just stuck on, no trouble at all. They do feel really nice quality. Nothing's peeled off, everything stayed exactly where it should be, so far at least, been in there obviously the whole day. Um, so yeah, that was that is pretty simple and pretty easy. So the first thing I did was to test this in the daytime, even though really lighting products are more for nighttime ambience, I thought people are gonna wonder, well, what was it like in the daytime, Cole? Can you actually see it? So let's put up this video clip now. This is of an ambient light color test, and it's gonna cycle through some different static colors and then sort of moving colors as well. And this will give you a chance to see how accurate the colors look in daylight. And I'll do this same test again, nighttime with the lights obviously all off. Now I'm colorblind, but to me, the colors don't look quite as representative as what you see on the screen, but there's many variables here. How is my TV calibrated versus the little control unit that this Light Me kit uses? We've got the fact that we're just reflecting off of a white wall in the background. You know, what shade of white is it? Is it a bit darker than some others, a bit lighter than some others? So you're never gonna get a 100% um, copy of what we see on the screen. That's just impossible. You know, unless we had the LED strips on the front and we were looking directly at them and they were, you know, calibrated to the same color space as what uh, my television is. So we kind of expect there to be some sort of difference, but to my eyes, it looks reasonably close. And that's probably all we can ask really from something like this. But that's how bright it is in the daytime. You can still see the light around the outside edge of the TV as it changes. The bottom of my TV looks like there's less light coming out from these LED strips, and that's because my TV is actually tilted towards me, um, top to bottom. You can't really see that in the video footage, but because it's a big screen, when we sit on the sofa, which is middle of the screen's kind of eye level, we actually have the TV tilted ever so slightly down towards us, so there is more light coming from the top than there is at the bottom. So let's do now the same test, but in the darkness, straight away you can see how much more light there is around the TV. And again, you can see at the bottom there, there's noticeably less. So it's nothing to do with LEDs themselves, it's just because I've got it tilted downwards. Uh, I mean, being as my eye level is the center of the screen and the viewing angle of the TV is good, I probably should just have it flat. I hadn't really thought about this before, but you have a habit of slouching on your sofa and kind of sinking in a little bit. And my previous installation, I had a TV quite a bit higher on the wall because it was a mantelpiece in the way. So we had to have it pointing down towards us. And I think I've just done that by default without really thinking about it. So I may, after this review, go downstairs and just level that TV out, get the spirit level out, make sure it's um, flat, and I'll probably get an even spread of light top and bottom. But what you can see here is at night time, obviously there is so much more light coming out of these LEDs around the edge. And you can now see a better representation of how the colors look. And as I say, they're never gonna be identical to what we see on the TV because they will not be calibrated the same. Um, you know, the fact that it looks even remotely close is, is pretty reasonable. So that's what, that's what that looks like, a slow moving one. Let's put up a fast moving kind of scene now where you'll have stuff coming in from darkness, from the left, from the right, from the top, from the bottom, so we should get flashes as areas of the screen near the edge start to light up. And this is quite an interesting one, I thought, when I was sort of testing this out. We will, I will be showing some sim racing in a little while, but I wanna show a full spectrum of you know what this thing can do, because I don't really think it's of any benefit to sim racers 
but for other games and as a, a nice little ambient light toy for when you're watching movies or just generally watching YouTube or TV or whatever it is you do with your display, um, I think it's actually quite a cool gadget. Now, there is three different modes for the video output side of things. Um, let me just have a little look on the app and see what they are. I'll show you this in a minute when I finish demonstrating it. You've got video, recreation, and game. And you have a brightness control slider and a degrees of diffusion slider as well. Now the video mode actually, well, what it says on the website is that there's less light coming out of the LEDs in video mode. It says the, um, the video light produces fewer colors, sorry. Than, rec than, re than recreation or game light, so as to not distract you when watching the video. To be honest, it looks like it kind of just dims it a little bit. It was really quite hard for me to figure out what was going on. I did go look around the back as I flicked between the three, but recreation and game look exactly the same. But video is definitely a little bit less intense. Again, so as to not distract you when watching films, because when things are fast paced and changing, they do flick on and off at quite a pace. Um, which can be distracting. Right, so that was a fast moving one. Then we've got, we've done that at night time. So let's do, oh, I may as well show you ACC uh, now. This is in daytime. And I thought, I did it in, in, a, in a daytime race and I was like, well, there's not really a whole lot going on here. Maybe it will be more beneficial in a nighttime race. So I'll just show you 30 seconds of this. You can see there's not really a whole lot going on, you know, around the outside edge of the TV here. Certainly nothing that's going to add any sort of immersion to the experience of, of racing. So as I say, not really, uh, not something I'd recommend purely for sim racing because it doesn't really do much. Yeah, let's flick over now to the nighttime one. Again, I won't focus too much on this because it doesn't really do a lot. So. <laughs> There's not much to show you. This is the nighttime setup and you can barely, you know, there's like a little bit of blue in the bottom right hand corner there. Oh, and I'm playing on control pad, standing behind my sofa before anyone judges my driving as I go around smashing into cars. Playing on control pad is so weird as a sim racer. It's not something I ever do and haven't done for years. But as you can see, from the ambient light kit point of view, we've got almost nothing going on around the outside of the TV. But then when you look at the scene, there's not a whole lot of light around the outside edge, you know, for it to, to display anyway. But even in the daytime ones where there was more light, there still really wasn't a whole lot going on. Not enough for me to recommend you buy this as a sim racing product anyway. So let's stop that. We'll have a quick goosey at uh, Street Fighter 4. Because I thought to myself, or Street Fighter 5 even, I thought to myself, let's you know, let's try some other games that do have a lot of colours that change. And as you can see straight away, we've got more light going on around the outside here. And for a bit of fun, again, it's a cool toy to have when you're sitting in a, in a sub, sub, subduly lit, that's not the right phrase at all, in a subtly lit room with this on, you know, the white background behind the TV. It actually adds a reasonable amount of sort of lighting effects to the game that you're playing in a game like this where there are lots of different colors going on so for something like street fighter or other games where there are lots of bright colors and, and things changing often um, i think it's actually quite a cool gadget to have as far as like watching films goes i can't actually put up clips of films because they often get snatched um, by youtube for copyright but i found a nice hdr video of, of New York, probably drone footage, so I'll put that up now as kind of film-like effects. And that's a good point, the HDR um, at 4K60 and at 1080p 120 worked just fine, there was no issues whatsoever with that, no problems at all. So again, you see here, in a more cinematic, film-like setup, we have got a reasonable amount of light from that LED kit, and it does change obviously based on what we're seeing on the screen, although these all seem to be a very similar shape. Well, bottom left-hand corner now has, has obviously changed noticeably. I would also say there is a slight noticeable delay. There, you see it then. From when the image on screen changes to when the LEDs kind of catch up. 
and that annoys me a little bit. You, yeah, you can see it every time now. Um, if maybe if you're pl if you're playing a game like Street Fighter, you're never going to notice. If you're sim racing, you're not going to see anything anyway. But if you're watching a film, I found this quite distracting. This is all on full brightness as well, by the way. You can turn the brightness up and down. And I think if I was watching a film in these sort of light conditions, I would probably turn it down a little bit as well, and maybe things would blend in a little bit more. So, there's a whole load of demos of how it works under different circumstances, different games, different types of testing. We'll have a quick look at the app itself. I mentioned earlier three different modes, video, recreation, and game. If you look, oh, is it not gonna focus because my face is in it? Come on. Focus, there we go. So the slider at the bottom is actually the response time how quickly the LEDs change, and I've got it on maximum. And then the brightness is the one at the top, and that obviously just alters the brightness, and there's your three different modes. As I say, video mode kind of turns things down just a touch, and recreation and games seem to be exactly the same. At the bottom then, we've got music and scene. Now, music I can put up, there's a few different presets you can choose from there, and I'll just put up a clip of that now. And you'll see me just cycling through all the different, we start off on the default video mode and then you'll see it flick over in a second when I've changed it on the app. There we go, there's the first one. That's just called classic. Kind of just flashes away to the music. Then we've got pop, which is this one, which is kind of flashing again, but a more intermittent rate. Oh, and the volume needs to be very, very loud for this to work, by the way. What you see here now is rock as in rock music. Yeah, if your music's, I'd have it at almost party levels for it to actually pick it up. I think there's a microphone in the unit. This one's ambient, or ambient, as it says on the app. Yeah, and I have quite a BB sound system as well, and it's still able to be loud. This is absolute, no E on the end, absolute. And then I think there's just electro after that, which is this one, yeah. So they're the different music modes. Um, the scene modes, there's a whole load of them, uh, and I won't demonstrate each one because the video's gonna get boring, but they're all customizable as far as the actual colors go and what they do, but yeah, I probably wouldn't use the scenes for anything. The music mode, though, is actually kind of half decent. It's something I probably would use if I was having a party or doing a DJ stream or something like that. But yeah, <laughs> in conclusion then, from a sim racing point of view, as a sim racing accessory, I think it adds absolutely nothing to our sim racing experience. Because I was curious whether, you know, if you were just a single screen racer on your cockpit and you had your cockpit up against a wall, you might get some nice ambient lighting effects, you know, as you're going through your, your tracks or your stages, but it doesn't really seem to be the case. But from a watching YouTube content, playing music, watching a film or playing other types of games like Street Fighter, I do think it's quite a cool toy. Again, only for those people that are running 4K60, if you're a super high refresh rate screen with a 4090 or something, then it's no good to you. Um, 1080p up to 120 hertz is of course the other option. I did try 1440p at 120, but it didn't show up as an option. Uh, it's only 60 at that resolution as well. So it's a little bit niche. It's not really for sim racers. But for people that like to watch things, you know, or to, to listen to music and, and have a little bit of effects going on, then I think it's quite a cool toy. I'm going to leave it on my TV because it can just peel off and I can put it away. But it does annoy me that there is that slight delay between changing from what you see on the screen to what the LED strips put out. But yes, that's my review of the Light Me Fantasy TV backlight kit. Not for sim racers, possibly for gamers and just content consumers, uh, I would say. And the price wise, you know, 150 for the small kit, 200 for the bigger kit. Definitely not cheap. But then when I bought rolls of LED strips to put light on my bar and DJ booth, 
They were quite expensive as well, and they had no HDMI input or pass through, no app, anything like that either. Um, and of course, everyone does have to make a profit. But it's up to you whether you think it's worth spending your hard earned on, or whether you want to look at the Philips Hue option, which of course is a lot more expensive and does basically the same thing. So there will be a link in the description. I'm pretty certain there's a 10% discount. Um, I was trying to look through the documentation here and I couldn't find it, but I'm pretty certain either when I went through their portal on their website to sign up to get this sent out, it said there's a 10% discount, um, or in one of my emails. If there isn't, I apologize, but I'm pretty certain there is. Anyway, as always, thank you very much for watching and take it easy.